Evangelina, hello. Hello, how are you? I am doing very well. I hope you are. Yes. Great. Beautiful picture. Where was that taken? Poland. Poland. Yeah. What part of Poland? That's uh, Krakow. Krakow, okay. Mm -hmm. um, wasn't uh, Pope John Paul II the Archbishop of Krakow before yes. he became Pope? Okay. Yes, I was uh, visiting his house and his first uh, chapel. Ah, okay, wow. But, but the, I'm Argentinian now, so so now I have my own <laughs> That Boy, <laughs> you, you want to move to America next? Uh, do you want a pope? <laughs> I, I can provide you one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's see. We'll see how Francis does. I, I think he's got the um, the makings of a very good pope, but, yeah. but we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Um, what's his name? Uh, um, Benedict was just an incredibly brilliant man, but almost too yeah. scholarly to be uh, um, an effective leader. But anyway, that's that's history. He's uh, yeah. Anyway, let's see what happened now. Yeah. Let, let, let's give the man his uh, his chance. Mm -hmm. um, Alfredo, how are you, sir? How are you, Kevin? I am doing very well. What a big surprise find you in the night. Well, it was one of those things at the last minute. I'd gotten, uh, there was a message on, on Facebook saying, we need someone to fill in for this class. Can anybody do it? I said, sure, why not? Saga, saga, saga. And it's, I, I designed the class. It should be interesting, I hope. Um, because it's it's all discussion. We're just going to talk. You yeah. enjoy uh, teaching, yes? Love it. Love it. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. And, and how did you guess, right? Um, okay. Anyway, I've got some new friends here and some older friends. I see Daniel, and I was having a nice chat with uh, Evangelina. Daniel, great to see you. As always, very good to see you. Uh, great to let's, see you too. Uh, we've got Mo. It's good to see you again, Mo. And uh, Ricardo. Have we met Ricardo? Hi, Chicho. How are you? I am well. I am well. Okay, here's what we'll do. We'll get started, and I'll start out. I mean, most of you have, have probably run into me once or twice, but I'll go ahead. I hate to say teacher for this particular class, but I'm here. I am 54 years old. I am bald, and I've been teaching for... <laughs> I've been teaching for 33 years in, in one way or another ever since I graduated from uh, college. I've had other jobs, but it's always come back to teaching. So <laughs> at the age of 54, I've finally grown up and said, yes, I'm a teacher. Um, I'm an adult, but I haven't really grown up. Anyway, <laughs> I live in uh, Raleigh, North Carolina. Um, I love the idea behind Kalingo. I love the concept of Kalingo in that we, um, we talk with each other and you converse that way and that's how you learn English and I think that's wonderful and, and I'm, I'm having a wonderful time doing this and I've met some great people so let's go around some of you I know and some of you don't know each other so please Mo could you start out and, and simply introduce yourself to everybody hi teacher hi everyone Hello. my name is Mohammed. I'm from Algeria and I'm three thirty-two years old okay welcome welcome thank you uh, Ricardo it's your turn, hi. Ricardo. Say hi. <laughs> yes, uh, I'm Ricardo. I'm from São Paulo, Brazil, and uh, I am a system analyst. I work uh, nice. with uh, telecom systems. Wow. Okay. In São Paulo, and you're here just to to practice English. Yes, I need okay. to practice some English. Okay. Well, this is conversation, so I'm very glad to have you here. Thank okay. You. Um, Alfredo, how are you, sir? I'm fine. My name is Alfredo Maldonado. I live in Maracaibo, Venezuela. So uh, I'm a civil engineer. I'm 50 years old. Uh, I know I know a follower of Chavez. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Daniel. How are you, sir? Ah, oh, I'm very. I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm laughing because you say me, sir. I, I thought that it was Sir it was Paul McCartney and Sir Elton Elton John and all those <laughs> famous famous people. It's a term of respect. 
It's a term okay. of respect. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, Daniel, remind me where you live. I live in South America, okay. Uruguay. It's Uruguay, country. that's right. Uruguay, that's between right. Argentina and Brazil. So we have a Venezuelan, we have a Brazilian, and uh, a Uruguayan, and we also have an Argentinian here. Yep. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> Evangelina. Uh, that's but, me. <laughs> all right, let's say hello to Imad first. Hello, Imad. Oh, hello, Teacher Kevin. How are you? I am very well. How are you? I'm um, very well, too. <laughs> good, good. Um, where are you from, Imad? Yeah, I told you yesterday, I think so. I'm from Kurdistan. I'm Kurdish. That's right. You're Kurdish, Kurdistan. Okay, very good. Yeah. Nice to have you here with us. All righty. And uh, Evangelina, how are you? Fine. I'm Evangelina. I live in Argentina. I'm 32 years old, and I'm a teacher. Teacher. And, and she's really, really good at, at, uh, at creating popes. Yes, yes, I am. <laughs> I'm did the you, best one. <laughs> did you spend any time in Germany, by the way? Yes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Can you believe it? <laughs> Understand, guys. She came from Poland, Krakow. Okay, a, a pretty famous pope came from there, um, of happy memory. And then, of course, she's been to Germany, and Benedict came from Germany. And where is she now? Argentina. Are you in Buenos Aires? Yes. Oh my God. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to the States next July. Do you want something? Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Kevin. Yes, yes, yes. And they have a Pope now. Yes, that's just it. Yeah. You know, um, Francis is, is from Buenos Aires, yeah. Uh, so if you go to Boston or New York, <laughs> I'm going to start well, watching. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. Anyway, but welcome. I'm glad you're here. <laughs> yes, yes. Why don't you ask her to bring some, some wines to you? Uh, you know what? You know what, Ricardo? I was checking my refrigerator, <laughs> and there is a bottle of Argentinian wine in my refrigerator. Um, please, please don't say that it's good. Don't say that it's good wine. It's the I best one. It. I haven't tried it. This one is from Chile. <laughs> that, that, one, that one is Chilean. Yeah. yeah, yeah, this one is from Chile, from Chile and they changed the level. It's Concha y Toro. Now, now, wait a minute, well, wait a minute. I make wine in North Carolina, and I make it, okay? <laughs> so you because, sent a bottle to us. Okay, <laughs> I think it's illegal, but, but I'll consider it. Um, <laughs> I, I used to make it out of wild cherries. Um, too many people make it out of good grapes, and good grapes are expensive. So mm -hmm. I used some of the other fruits, your wild cherries and all that. Made some great stuff. Um, good. I'm working on beer next. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, Gadi, how are you? Hello, teacher. Hello. I'm fine. How are you? I am very, very well. I am very well, and I hope you are. Um, I just see this blank screen whenever you come to class. So. I get to hear your voice, which is very nice. Now, remind me, please, where you live. Is it, um, you live in Saudi? Yes, yes. Okay, that's right, that's right. Okay, well, again, welcome. It's always good to have you. And uh, Antonio. Hi, teacher. How hey, are you? I am doing very well. And if you would, please, uh, remind us where you are from. I'm from Brazil. Brazil. Very, very strong South American concentration today. That's great. <laughs> Uh, let's see, and uh, someone from Kurdistan, and someone from uh, Saudi Arabia. Uh, great, and then you got me. So, today's class, today's class, if we want to call it that, I'm working on an art theme, and I'm going to show different pictures, some famous, not so famous, that deal with uh, moments of, of mythology, uh, Greek mythology in this case. And we, I want to talk about the stories behind them and how those stories have become words in English. Some of the stories are very funny. Some of them are very sad. But they all make for great words. Okay? Everybody ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. okay. Yeah. And, and since there's no scripted class, I'd like lots of discussion and thought, comments and thoughts. So here we go. Now, what do you see here, guys? Try hard. 
Okay. Trojan horse. Okay. horse. okay. The Trojan horse. Okay. Oh, I yeah. don't. Who who would like to tell me that story? It's the Odyssey of, of the of the Troy, uh, Iliad. Actually, the Aeneid. What? The story of the Trojan horse isn't in the Iliad or the Odyssey. It's in the Aeneid. Did you know that? Iliad and war. Mm hmm Yeah. In um, but we'll get to that in a minute. Just tell the story. Ulysses. Mm hmm. Who, who wanted to to fight against Troy? He was from Greece, mm -hmm. and he uh, all the soldiers were inside the, the horse. So they get out of the horse and they by invaded uh, Troy. Okay, would someone like to expand on that, please? What? Uh, more. Would someone like to, else like to say more about that? Is there more to say? It was a, a big a, a strategy uh, for a, for a, in order to win a, a war. Right. Now, so Teacher. the um, yes. I, uh, uh, I remember that I read that story, and I remembered, and I remember that uh, some soldiers. Uh, uh, I don't remember some. Some men, some soldiers, was inside of his of uh, that horse, mm -hmm. and they waited the night to invade, to to kill the the other people of of that city. Yeah, yeah. is that right? That is correct. Yeah, that is correct. Ah, ah yes. Yeah. It was All the right. only way to get. I like it. it. I like that story it's very, oh, so much. Oh, it, it, it's a good story. Um, Evangelina, you want to add something to that? I, I was saying that it was the only way they found to get into the city. It was a gift for a princess or something. So that's why they get the. They could get in the city, leaving the horse in the middle of uh, of it, and at night all the soldiers. Uh, get out from the went out from the horse and invaded the city in some way. Okay. Exactly. Um, anyone else want to add something to that? Okay. In in Greek literature, the Iliad, and I'll go ahead and write that out. I L L I A D is an epic poem that tells the story of the Trojan War. Um, that it mainly um, talks about the arguments between Achilles and Agamemnon, but Troy itself was a huge city, and you can see over here the horse next to these walls. And the walls, according to the legend, were like 10, you know, huge, incredibly thick. So thick that no one could breach the walls. You could not conquer the city with arms. Okay, There was only one way and the person who invented it and let's see, I think it was either Imad or Daniel who mentioned that was Ulysses. Ulysses, the great. Ulysses. He, he was a king of Ithaca, one of the very small little Greek um, city-states that was out there. But he's considered very clever, one of my heroes. And he invented the idea of the Trojan horse. Yeah. The Trojan horse was to be a great big hollow horse, okay? Totally empty on the inside. And inside he was going to put hmm, probably 50 or 60 soldiers, okay? So 50 or 60 soldiers he put in and then he arranged for all of the Greeks and all their ships to just get up and go. So they got up and went. So the only thing that was standing out on the beach was this great big horse. Then the story picks up in the Aeneid, which was written by Roman Virgil. And that's where they discovered... Uh, oh, yeah. Hmm? Uh, the Aeneid, because in Spanish it's Eneida. Yes. So I didn't mm -hmm. understood. I didn't understand the, the name Eneida. Oh, okay. It's in Spanish. Yeah, you yeah. You said Aeneid, and I didn't understand. 
this. Okay, okay. I, again, I apologize for the confusion. Um, one of the things I had to do when I took when was in high school is I had to read it in Latin, when, and it was lots of fun. Uh, but a guy named Sinan was a spy left behind, and he's the one who talked the Trojans into taking the horse into the city as kind of a peace offering. So they take the thing into the city. They actually broke their gates to get the thing in. Okay? Yeah. And everybody has a big party, and they all get drunk. Okay? And then Sinan sneaks over, and he opens up the door, and the Trojans climb, the Rome, Greeks climb out, and they open up the gates, and all the Greek sailors have come in, and they invade and they destroy the city. Okay? Mm -hmm. That's the story of the Trojan horse. Let me show you something else. What's that? Do you see it? Yeah. yeah. Has anyone ever heard of a piece of computer malware called no. a Trojan? Oh, yeah, yeah the, the, the virus. Sorry. Yeah. Guess where it comes from? To destroy all. It's the Trojan horse. Yeah. You let a Trojan program in. A, is it a virus? Well, it's not a virus. A virus is just a program. Okay, somebody's printing something on a dot matrix <laughs> printer. <laughs> okay. Um, it's now what we're talking in general is what we call malware. Okay? Yeah. You have hardware, software, and mall does not come from a shopping center. It comes from the Latin malus. Malicious software. Malicious. Bad. Mall. So it's malicious software. And you've got viruses. And a virus is a program that gets into your computer and grows. <laughs> it just grows. Yeah. It doesn't do anything, it just grows. A, um, a worm is like a piece of spyware, only it doesn't attach itself to programs, it just climbs in and does things. A Trojan is specifically designed to damage your computer. In the same way, that the wooden horse of Troy <laughs> was dragged in and the, the Trojans let it in, you let a Trojan into your computer. Understand? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Perfectly. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, and they have their spy. It's usually a nice email with the name of someone you know and a link. And you click on that link and... Boom, and it comes. So, anyway, so that's your that's your Trojans. Does anyone want to add anything to that? And I'm getting a heck of an echo. No. Nothing. Yeah. Okay. You you have to you have to have a program to to destroy the Trojan. <laughs> yes. Yes. You, you have to have something, and, and sometimes you can't. Uh, but yeah, you have to have a, a, a program to destroy your choice. <laughs> and, and the cleaner, cleaner, and then a program to destroy the Trojan. Yes. Yes, and, and I get stuff in my computer all the time. Don't like it, but what can you do? Okay, let's move on again. I'm getting a, a really bad echo. Uh, and now here is a more modern painting by a woman named W.M. Smith, and I'm going to tell you her story, and then you, one of you, is going to tell me her name. Ready? Okay. This... No. Uh, come on, let's... Um, Ricardo, I'm getting a, a real strong echo from you, buddy. Can I mute you, please? You done that? Okay, good. All right, thank you. This is a modern painting, and this woman was a Greek 
nymph. A nymph was kind of an innocent fairy creature who lived in the woods. She had a problem. Okay? She liked to talk. You ever run into people who like to talk? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. But she didn't just talk. She prattled. Do you know what it is to prattle? No. I don't know. I don't know it. When you prattle, and I'll go ahead and put that word down. You prattle is to talk endlessly about nothing. <laughs> is to talk endlessly about nothing and um, it is often and unfairly associated with teenage girls guys do it too but the whole point is someone will come up and say you know I really wanted to tell you about this sort of thing and it was such an interesting thing I was watching them and he got the hit and it kept going like that you kind of like that sort of thing don't you and it, it goes on like that okay she liked to do this according to the legend Jupiter, Zeus, was once again running around on his wife. So he asked this woman to help him out. He said, if my wife, Hera, Juno, comes this way, talk to her. So she did. And she talked and talked and talked and talked and talked, and Zeus got away with whatever it is he was trying to do. Well, Hera, the wife of Zeus, was furious. So she cursed this nymph. Because this woman liked to talk so much, the curse was this. She could talk, but all she could ever do was repeat what someone had just said. So if I said good morning, she would say morning. And if I would say hello everyone, she would simply say everyone. And this picture captures when she first realizes that that's the way it's going to be for the rest of her life. Can anyone tell me what her name was? Is she Parrot? What's that? Parrot. What's that, Mohammed? Parrot. P A W R O T. No, parrot? No. Yeah. Although the term parrot does refer to someone who does that. I've actually used the word a few times in today's class. The name of the nymph. The what? name of the nymph. But uh, we have to guess it. I, I really. <laughs> you know enough to not guess, but oh, to understand. Okay. You know enough. Oh. And you're going to be really unhappy when I tell you. Okay. Problem. It's not prattle. She couldn't prattle anymore. Echo. 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 What's the name of her? Her Echo. name was Echo. What's that? Echo. 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 And that's where the word comes from. Echo was a Greek nymph who, according to the legend, ended up, you know, just talking and talking and talking. And she was cursed by being able to repeat only what she was told. Okay? It is the first time that I heard that. Yes? It is the first time that I heard that. Oh, really? Really? Um, it's a wonderful story. And, and if I remember properly, it comes from um, a, a collection of stories called The Metamorphosis. I think that's how it's meta. M O R P H O S E S, the metamorphosis um, by Ovid, uh, because he talks about changing, and this is one of those change stories. Okay. Nice story. Isn't it a beautiful story? Yeah. It's, it gets better, <laughs> or, and, and it gets very sad, and you know, and you can see her. Can you imagine being someone who likes to talk? And she's very pretty realizing suddenly that she's not going to be able to talk ever again, that's sad.
That's awesome. very sad. Now let's go down here. Here is a more classic picture by a person named J.W. Waterhouse, as I was doing a little digging. And this is the story of Echo, and you can guess who Echo is, and Narcissus. Does anyone know this story? Yeah, Narcissus. Yeah, tell me, Daniel. Yeah, yeah he... he saw his face and a and a mirror of what the water it's it was like the lake the fountain was like a mirror and he looked at his face and he fe he felt so uh, marvelous and he his face was was so lovely to him that he felt in love with himself yeah, so he he he's, he's Gotten paralyzed all the all the life, watching to him. Okay. Image. Okay, and once again, that's out of the metamorphoses. But what what role does Echo play in all of this? Oh, she's bothering. She she's talking to him, and he's looking at at himself. Well, but but she's specifically she's part of the. Um, go ahead. She is repeating everything he said, so oh, he believes yeah. it, maybe? Not really, but close. That's really good. There's something poetic and ironic about this whole story. They are, they are the, uh, 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 the wife and the, the <laughs> of him huh? or not? No, no. It's not her, his wife. Let's, let's, let's start out. We know about Echo. Mm -hmm. And because Echo was a wood nymph, very pretty, she spent her time living in the woods. Narcissus was a young man, exceptionally handsome, exceptionally beautiful. The Justin Bieber of his day, okay? Um, I didn't say that. I really didn't say that. Anyway, all of the nymphs and all of the women of whatever Greek town he lived in were madly in love with him, okay? But Narcissus, being Narcissus, thought, well, of course they love me, because I'm me, and went about just basically ignoring them. Echo was one of many who fell in love with him, and she kept waiting and said uh, for him to show up, and he saw his reflection, and he says, oh, and she responded, oh. Mm -hmm. He said, you're beautiful. And she said, you're beautiful. And he said, I love you. And she said, I love you, and came walking out. And he looked at her and he said, no, no, I don't love you. I love you. <laughs> and he pointed at his reflection. Yeah, to himself. To himself. To himself. Yeah. Well, was in, was in love of himself. Love of himself. That's now the here's, narcissism. That's where the word narcissism comes from. You beat me to it. <laughs> 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 but Echo was so heartbroken by this that, you know, the legend of many lovers is she got sad and pined away and pined away until there was nothing left of her but her voice. And you can still hear her trying to call to someone when you walk out and hear your voice reflecting back in the form of an echo. So Echo herself disappeared, and there was nothing left but her voice. So that's what happened to poor Echo. Hmm. Now let's go to Narcissus. I'm sorry? No, nothing. Okay. Narcissus. Well, the gods, of course, got angry at Narcissus and his excessive love of himself. So they cursed him. And they maced him, as, as Daniel said, fall in love with his reflection. Okay? Mm -hmm. yeah. And this picture has him wearing a laurel leaf, staring at his reflection. Okay? And eventually he too pined away until there was nothing left. Now, guys, I want you to take a very close look at this picture. 
there are some flowers in this picture. Can you see them? Yeah. What are they? I think they are in Spanish lirios, but I don't know, okay. know how to say it in English. Are you talking? You talking the ones on the lake? Those are lilies, water lilies. What about on the land? Do you see any on the land? On the land? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, background, maybe some. Okay. Look at his feet. Yeah, some white ones. Yeah, do those look familiar? I cannot see very well, but... Okay, let, let me see if I can bring it up for you. Because uh, this, this is really, really important to this story. Who better? It's still yeah. kind of difficult, because the, the guy who painted this... Okay. Poor little echo. Yeah. Can you see the flowers? Mm-hmm. Does anyone know what those flowers are called? What are Narcissus in its Spanish? It's a narcissus. Mm -hmm. We call them a daffodil, but it's also called a narcissus. Oh no. It's and a that's a narcissus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And according to K okay, Roman legend, <laughs> that is where the flower narcissus got its name. Because the gods when he died changed him into this flower. They changed him into this flower. Okay? So mm -hmm. that's the Narcissus. Again, the, the Roman stories are always beautiful and they're always sad. Um, and the Greeks are always beautiful and they're always sad, but they're pretty stories that tell about things. Anyway, so, so those, are, those are some of the stories behind some words that made it into our language. But since we've seen some art, I want you guys to tell me a little bit about art. This is a statue by Clamille Claudel, and I want you guys to tell me what this statue is all about. Start with um, Alfredo. Tell me about this woman. What do you see? I can see uh, a boring woman. She's sad. Waiting for a, for a, I don't know, but she looks like a people that's waiting for. Um, but the the real history, I don't know. No, this is this is a piece of art. Yeah, and like 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 a piece of art is beautiful, mm -hmm. good, excellent work. She looks looks very very sad. Maybe he he lost a, a, a child, or a kid, or a friend, or a husband. I don't know, but. Uh, uh, looks like that. Okay. Now, the, the reason I asked about that is that there's there's different ways of looking at a piece of art. Some are, well, what is it art about? And that's some of the stuff I showed you. But at the same time, you can look at something like this, and it tells you a completely different story. For example, what you see is you see a woman who is sitting there, and she may be sad. She may has, have suffered a, a terrible loss. Is that what you're saying, Alfredo? Yeah, yes. Something very sad. Something yeah, sad. Yeah, if I, if I can see in the, in the piece of art. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and why would you say that it's sad that she's lost something? How does that say that to you? Because the, the, the face looks like a very, very, very sad. Okay. Yeah. All right. Very good. Okay. Andrea. Andrea. Hello. Andrea. Hello. 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 Okay. Looking at this, this statue, what, what, tell me about it. What do you see? She seems to be tired, and she holds uh, something on her, uh, her hands, maybe a, a book, and she seems to be reading something for hours, and now she's tired and stopped to thinking about anything. Okay. So she's not necessarily sad, in your opinion? Yes, she's not sad. She's Only just tired. Tired, yes. Yeah. Okay, and she's got a book. She is holding a book. I can see that. Yeah. Uh, what do you think she might have been reading? Maybe a Bible. Mm -hmm. Holy Bible. Maybe. Could be a Holy Bible. Could be. Could be. Okay, holding that thought, let me go down to uh, Antonio. 
Antonia, what do you see? Um, I see a, a woman that it, she, she seems tired uh, of the life. Uh, don't know. She she can be sad, but uh, I'm not sure. Uh, she seems she she, she seems that uh, uh, ref reflecting about about the book. She seems that uh, she she's reading a, a poetry, for example, or something interesting, and she's reflect reflecting about that thing. Okay, so you think not necessarily tired, or not necessarily sad, but she's being reflective. She has seen this, and she's she's thinking about it. Is is that what you're saying? Yes. I okay. think that she's thinking about something. Okay. All right. Good. Thank you. Thank you. She, look, she looks like a blind woman. She said, Marco, you say she's blind? Yes. Why seems, did you say that? Seems that she is reading a book with her hand. You know, I never thought of that. But yeah, I mean, it's right there on the pages. It could be in Braille. Okay. I think she is just bored waiting for something to happen. Just bored waiting for something to happen. Yes. Okay. So we're going everywhere from tragedy to boredom to contemplation to reading in Braille. Wow. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> Imad, what do you say? Imad? Yeah, uh, like that uh, lick uh, happen, uh, happens with me. When I'm uh, reading a book and uh, uh, shock it with some phrase or uh, some sen uh, sen uh, sentence, I will reflect uh, to thinking what happened uh, to that person or, you know, something like that. Mm -hmm. So so you're closing your eyes, you think she's closing her eyes, thinking about what she has read in the book and trying to imagine what, what she's seeing? Ma maybe she... Uh, she interested in some phrase or some uh, some action. Mm, okay, there's just something that's caught her mind, and she wants to think about it more. Is that what you're think you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. Almost. Okay. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, would you like to clarify? I've, I've misunderstood, I guess, but say it a little more for me, please. Ah. Okay. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. All right, Evangelina, what do you say? Yeah. Okay, mainly the same that the other people say, but uh, I don't think she is a woman. I think she's uh, a, a kid, right? A young child? Okay. Yes, yeah, a child. And I also think she has uh, read something interesting or maybe an adventure book or something like that and she is dreaming about it, uh, thinking about what is happening in the book maybe could happen to her someday. Hmm. Okay. Something like that. But I also support Ricardo's version about the blind thing. He says she's blind. She's reading it in possibly yeah. in Braille. Okay. Okay. And, and so, why do you... Uh, yeah. Yes. If, if she was a blind, why well, she is a uh, catch a book? It's Braille. How can a blind person read in a book? There, there you are can. books that. Uh, go ahead, Evangeline. You, you no, no, no. Ahead, that, I mean, you, you can you can read with your fingers. There is a system called called Braille, where you can read with. There are small spots. Where you Maybe can touch them and and you recognize letters by touching them, don't you know about it? Yeah, you describe another another subject. Yeah, yeah, but but that's how she's. What's important about art is that so far I've talked to seven different people and I've got to get to uh, got it yet, and each one of you has seen uh, Ricardo hasn't spoken yet either, has seen something different. Okay. Um, I mean, Marco points out that she could be in Braille. Everybody says that she's a woman except for Evangelina, who says she's more likely a young girl. Um, now, could you, would you like to uh, 
explain why you believe she's a young girl as opposed to an adult woman. Uh, I don't know. I can I can see maybe her breast, mm -hmm. and she is a uh, little. She's small. The way she is wearing the clothes. Okay. The, maybe the maybe hair, she was unmarried. Maybe she was unmarried. Well, she could be unmarried. She could be young. I mean, uh, this, but you could be unmarried and old too. Yeah. Um, uh, so it's you're saying just like a, a waif, like she just looks young. Is that what you're saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, Gotti, what do you say? Um, in fact, uh, I hear the many different opinions. Uh, it's uh, all reasonable. The ideas uh, all uh, reasonable and uh, great. Maybe I I think uh, she's uh, relaxing after finishing the book. Maybe she's thinking of the uh, of something or uh, imagining, but I don't see her sad at all. Not, I think not she's, yeah. I don't uh, think she's sad. I think she's uh, happy. In fact, uh, imagining of uh, something, I don't know. Maybe. Hmm. Well, you know, there is no right or wrong answer on any of this stuff. It's it's mm -hmm. what your immediate yeah, impression. Is. What uh, what I see, I see her happy uh, a little. Mm -hmm. You see her happy. Um, okay, all right. Thank you, thank you. Um, let's go to. Okay, we lost Ricardo, but we got Daniel back. Yeah. Daniel, yeah. <laughs> wait those days. Welcome back. I think she's very sad because she's crazy uh, because of the love she had and. In the sculpture, it, it was it was not made, but by her. She's Camille Claudel, but she's not. She was not made by by her. Okay. And she's sad because she she is crazy at the hospital. How do you say there? You you say she's in like a, a mental institution, an asylum. Ah, yeah, an asylum. She's yeah, mentally ill. Yeah, because the last thirty years of her life, she she was she lived in the hospital. Okay, but what about the piece of art itself? You're you're judging it from Camille Claudel's life. Yeah. Um, I think she is. Uh, she's remembering her love. Always. Oh, so she could be someone remembering a lost love. Yeah, the last love, and she always thinking about that. She's obsessive. She's uh, dreaming, always dreaming about that. Hmm. Okay. Um. She's remembering the Rodin, that was hmm. her her lover. Right. Could be. Could be. You know more about that particular one than I do. I mean, my, my take on art is that it, whatever you happen to see is correct, <laughs> because that's what art is. Um, what, what I'm seeing is, first of all, she's rather serene, and she's also resigned. I notice, if you look at her hands, everybody look at her hands. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're really, really yeah. well-defined, aren't they? They're very yeah. clearly sculpted. Look at her feet. Look at those feet. Are those feet well defined at all? No. No. It, it's like they're part of the stone. Yeah. Yeah. The question is, is she growing out of the stone or is she turning into stone? She's turning into turning into stone. Why is she turning into stone? What would cause that? Metaphorically, think of something Daniel said. Again, this is this is my own take, so there's no one right or wrong answer. I hope we all disagree and have a wonderful time doing it. Maybe she's sitting for a long time. Okay, she's sitting for a long time, and, and gradually just becoming something. Um, okay, anybody else? I Any other? She got cursed or something. She's been cursed. Yes. Yeah. Well, um, what I think. <laughs> this is just me. Is that I see her as growing out of the stone yeah. through through contemplation and knowledge. She becomes greater than what she was, but it takes you know, strength 
um, and it takes uh, uh, determination to be, and, and she's kind of resting from part of this more than what she was. She's growing out. But again, that's me. Um, everybody's that's interpretation is, is valid. Okay, so you all feel good, right? Yeah, maybe he, maybe her temper was so so strong like a rock. Ah, okay. So so she's a woman of, of courage and strength. Is that what you're saying? Like a rock? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And he deserved on a on a sculptor uh, because she was a hero, uh, something like that. Okay, I like that. Now let's let's switch to something else. What about this one? A Gauguin. Red Indians. Okay, who said Red Indians? Me. Okay, me narrows it down quite a lot, guys. Who's me? Emad. <laughs> Emad. Okay, go ahead, Emad. <laughs> it's from ID. Yeah, I let's, think I'm wrong. <laughs> let, let me hear what Emad says, and then um, and then we'll go around. Go ahead, Emad. Tell me about this picture. Who are these people, and what are they doing? I have no idea about this view. <laughs> okay. Um, Daniel, I think you've got some ideas. Go ahead. Yeah, because he is he was French and, and Tahiti was from France and and he lived in Tahiti. I don't know how to say Papete. Tahiti is how we would say it. Um, Ta Papete is the city, the capital of Tahiti and and they they are uh, the the people from the o ocean, Pacific Ocean. Yeah. The Polynesians. The Polynesians, yeah, they are Polynesians. Okay, now let me ask you around a little bit. Kevin, I think that this this woman. I, I, can I can I can I speak about? Absolutely, absolutely, yes. I seen the, the these two women are uh, in different uh, status because they are uh, wearing the, in different way. Maybe one is married, and another is single. I can see that. Okay. Um, what they what are, are they? Sad. Yes, they are sad. Why are because, they sad? Yeah, because the French uh, obliged the, them to wear those clothes. They don't like the culture, the French culture. They have. What? Well, what did they wear? I mean, that, that's your interpretation. There could be others, but but why yeah, do you say that? But that was the story that um, that the French. Uh, didn't want to be nude. They used to be nude, and the French put obliged them to be dressed and not to all, all the folk of them. Okay, so they ran around wearing nothing, but when the French came, they made them wear clothes. They wore a uh, kind of skirts and they dance and with the with the parts the the I don't know how to say it in English the the part of uh, the, What's the, that? the front part of the woman. The bodice. Huh? The bodice. How do you say? It was nude. Uh, bodice, shirt front, yeah. uh, whatever. Yeah. I, I understand. Okay, yeah. let's go on. Let's go on. I want to hear what some people say other than let's get some other ideas because I'm, you know, the clothes and, and their Tahitian. We've got that. Looking at them, I've heard sad a couple of times. Um, Andrea, what do you think? Well, I don't think uh, they are sad. I think they're laying on a, on a canvas, on the grass, under the sun. I think it, they are enjoying the day, but not so happily, but just enjoying the day. They're just, just relaxing? Is that what you're saying? Just relaxing? Yes, yes, yes. Now, this woman here appears to be looking at something. What what do you think she's looking at? Someone coming. She's looking looking down. Maybe look at her son. Son, someone coming could be her son. You said. Maybe. Okay. She, her her look is uh, something down or. Okay. So yeah, it is kind of down and to the side. Antonia, what do you say? Teacher, I agree with Andrea. I think that uh, they they are only relaxing, enjoying the sun, 
enjoying the day, and thinking about something. And thinking, okay. What might they be thinking of? I don't know. Maybe in the life, in, in I don't know, in the life <laughs> or some okay. other thing, other, other okay. thoughts. Alrighty. Well, let's see. As a you from Daniel, uh, from Imad, a little bit from Evangelina. What else would you like to say about this? No, I think the lady on the right. She is uh, working something out with her hands. She is like doing some kind of handcraft or something. Mm -hmm. It's Maybe. obscure. Yeah, it is I a bit, don't, yeah. I don't. I don't. I cannot see very well, but I think she's doing something with uh, with her hands, like working out something. Like and maybe thinking, why am I wearing this long sleeve dress? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Gadi, what do you say? Gadi? Gadi, are you there? Yes, yes. yes. Uh, I think uh, the woman on the right uh, l uh, looking uh, to someone he hates or someone uh, she uh, she uh, she hates or she is uh, afraid of hmm. why do um, you say that i don't know she's sitting looking uh, i think she's looking to somebody not something she's looking uh -huh. to someone and it's someone she just does not like is that right yes. is that okay yes yes she is not flirting yeah okay how about the other one the one on the left I think she has a, a big problem. Mm, why do you say that? Uh, because uh, uh, she is laying her uh, uh, laying her uh, her head. Mm, okay. No, I think I think she's uh, ignoring. Uh, uh, she's ignoring the. I don't know. She's ignoring something. And if you and if you obs observe her uh, hand and uh, her foot, it's uh, it's so big. I don't know why. So it's a little out of proportion, is what you're saying? <laughs> maybe maybe uh, he's a man, like uh, someone said. I don't know who's uh, who's it. Hmm, like uh, like a transvestite. Uh, I don't know. Maybe he's a man with the long hair, because. Uh, oh. He has a big hand. It could be. It is a very masculine hand, um, but the face is feminine. I think. Maybe. 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 Um, Kimmy. I, yeah. I want to say something funny. Okay, go ahead. Two women. Two women talking. There yep. is a ghost. There is a ghost in progress. Oh, now come mm. on. Oh. Oh. Ooh. Okay. How many women want to throw things at him? You've got three women in the room, and you're saying something nasty about women? Boo. Ladies, what do you think? Boo. <laughs> <laughs> Gotti, is there anything else you would like to say about this picture? Uh, no, nothing more. No? No. But it, very interesting insight. All right, uh, Marco, how about you? Yeah, uh, I think that the, the, the girls uh, wearing dresses pink uh, uh, she is looking at uh, to to drawer and another is just uh, thinking or or sit uh, sit uh, seated uh, uh, just for for thinking about the the, the, the beach oh, at the beach thing. the beach okay yeah yeah, work on your pronunciation. We would do this one. We would pronounce it, just so you know, B-E-A-C-H. We would pronounce it B-E-E-C-H. Beach. Yeah. Because if you said bitch, uh, bitch okay. is a very insulting term. The correct term is beach. Okay. Is, is beach, as in going to the beach. Be, beach. 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 Yeah, okay, if you my, said more strong is another yeah. another term. Yeah, bitch would refer to it's an insulting term for a woman. Uh, okay, okay. So yeah, be very careful of your pronunciation. People would forgive <laughs> you in the United States because of your accents, but 
they would think funny. <laughs> so yeah, okay. just be careful with Teacher? that. Teacher. Yes, yes. May you repeat uh, the two pro the two uh, words, please? Oh, okay. The ones I just How said? How to pronounce. Sure, sure. Let me bring them up. You have B-E-A-C-H, and that is, I'll make them bigger, okay, as in um, you have, you make it nice and big so you can see it, okay? You can see it. We would pronounce that beach. Beach. Try that. Beach. Antonio? Beach. 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 Mar okay. No, no. E, E, E. Let me hear you say E. Long e. Beach. E. Beach. Beach. Now, this one, okay, forgive me, please, but I'm going to write it down anyway. Yeah. <laughs> a traditionally a bitch is a female dog often referring to a female dog that is in heat um, <laughs> someone who is considered a uh, a bitch in American slang and it's a deeply insulting term is a woman who is mean nasty unpleasant unfriendly we use the term bitchy um, do not use the expression or the pronunciation bitch around a woman, okay? Um, don't do it. <laughs> and, the, and the men are son of a? Yes, son of a bitch. There is a Spanish equivalent, and it's not nice either. No. And do, you, do you want to know it? I'm sure you already do. No. no, thank you. Then move is teacher. Teacher. Yes. Yes. So, right. and do we have to say beach to refer the first word? The yes. Word. Beach. And, yes. 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 And do we ha ha have to say beach first? Yes. Yes. I wouldn't even say the second one. Copacabana Beach. Yeah, Copacabana Beach. Um, Hudson Beach. Uh, Virginia Beach. Myrtle Beach. Um, the beaches of Southern California. Um, uh, uh, the Riviera. The beaches of the Riviera. Um, yes, that's all the nice and sand and beautiful things. Okay? Well, guess what, guys? We're running out of time. I'm going to save this particular thing and probably use it another time. But let's, let's just hop out for a minute and say, okay, uh, we finished this class, and this is a conversation class, and I think we've had some great stuff. But with a few minutes we have left, I like to answer any questions you might have about, about English, about America, about me, any of those things. What, what questions might you have? Anybody? No. Yes, I have. Yes, certainly, Ahmad. Uh, teacher, I uh, in the real I can't speak uh, English perfectly. Even my accent is so good. But I'm when sitting uh, in front of uh, the camera, I I'm confused. I don't know why, and I feel my accent is so bad. Well, you have an accent, but you're aware of it. You weren't aware of it before, so just. You can hear it now, and that's that's good. Uh, just yeah. Come, yeah. Uh, the more classes you come into, the better your accent will be. And, and you've got to remember, I have an accent too. Uh, mine is an American Southern accent, but I have one. We all have one. Uh, you're understandable, certainly, and that's good. Yeah, but I, yeah, if my accent is still like that, I so I hate it. Don't hate it. Don't hate it. Just work to overcome it. And you're yeah. doing that. Just you know, come to a Kalingo class every day. They're free, and either yeah, listen yeah. or take part. I, I do. I'll do. That's great. You're aware, and that's that's a real good thing. Which even now you would be understandable in the United States, but again, you want to work on it some more. And, and I'm glad you're here to do that. Very good. Okay. Does anyone have any questions or thoughts or anything you want to share or ask?
No, just to help for the class. I What's appreciate that? it. I love it. Oh. Oh, hey, I'm glad to be here. I'm glad everybody is here for these classes. Um, I love Kalingo. I think it's one of the best things I've ever worked with. I love yes, Kalingo too. It's great. Kalingo's, yes. Kalingo's, 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 I love Kalingo too. But, okay. Well, my friends, um, I'm going to be around tomorrow, but I'm not working oh, Saturday. Saturday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's you Easter heard, holiday. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, see you tomorrow. So much. Yeah, see you tomorrow. Goodbye, guys. Thank you Goodbye. so much. For Bye -bye. Bye -bye.